so you can just google how this hashtag came about and why this hashtag was created and if you just click on any of the news sources it will tell us that this hashtag were created by Asian community living in France as a way to protest online against the discrimination and stereotypes being placed upon them resulting from coronavirus. So, you can just click on any of the news sources if you want to learn more about this, these hashtags. Because I'm curious about what are the sentiments or the main emotions associated with this hashtag? So, I did a sentiment analysis in R on these two hashtags. Actually, these two hashtags, they mean the same. This is just the English meaning of these hashtags. Because it's logical to assume that some Twitter users may prefer to tweet in English instead of French. So I did a search on these two hashtags using the R language. And doing the sentiment analysis on these two hashtags is just to satisfy my curiosity. It's not my intention to offend anybody here. And doing a sentiment analysis using an open source program like the R programming language is another way to convince my students in the social sciences that it's not a bad idea for them to learn how to code, how to program in R or Python. Because this topic relates to race and ethnicity is a subfield in sociology but sometimes with the advent of social media and technology we may need to borrow techniques from data science and using a programming language like R to try to understand how people perceive or contextualize these issues. So, it doesn't hurt for students in sociology or social science in general to learn how to code. That's my point. And it's not my intention to offend anybody. And these are the number of tweets I found on these days from these two hashtags and the mean sentiments are listed in parentheses. As we can see, the number of tweets are highest on the days they first they were first created, like all the hashtags, then the number of tweets declined. That's the common thing I see among all these hashtags, regardless of the topic. The number of tweets often peak as soon as these hashtags were created, and after that, they gradually or drastically decline. And the mean sentiment scores was highest on February 4th for this hashtag in French 
and the mean sentiment scores was somewhat higher in on February 5th and also on February 2nd for this hashtag in English which means the same as this in French. So, as you can see, there are a lot of things we can do with sentiment analysis. We can just tabulate how many tweets are there on different dates. And we can also calculate the average sentiment scores based on all these Twitter messages on different days. And here are how the sentiment scores for different sentences within a tweet are distributed. As you can see, it looks almost like a normal distribution. There are only a few extreme scores towards the negative end or towards the positive end. Most scores are around neutrality. They are not too positive or not too negative. The same for these hashtags. Only a few extreme sentiment scores on both ends. And as we can see from here, the shorter the sentences, the more extreme their sentiment scores for some reason. It's the same with this hashtag. Usually, tweets with longer sentences have less extreme sentiment scores for some reason. I still can't figure out. So, these are the top sentiment scores from tweets on both ends. Some of these tweets have very high positive sentiment scores and some of these tweets have extremely high negative sentiment scores. As you can see from here. And here are just a few tweets I extracted from my Twitter search. And here are the top emotion types associated with this hashtag. The top three emotion types associated with this hashtag are trust, fear and disgust. And here are the top race-related emotion type associated with this hashtag. And the top race-related emotions associated with this hashtag will be racism, discrimination, and well, vulgar language. And most of the race-related sentiments associated with this hashtag are negative, you can say that. And there are also vulgar language or profanity associated with this hashtag. I guess people must be quite angry. And as you can see, which is not very different from cyberbullying, now it seems to me that people fight their battles online. People voice their opinions online. And it also seems to me that they don't do it face to face to some extent, as we see from here. Apparently, Twitter users who tweeted using this hashtag was quite angry. Look at all the negative sentiments in here. And here are the top emotion type 
associated with this hashtag. We have fear, sadness, and trust as the top three emotion types for this hashtag. And here are the top race related sentiments associated with this hashtag. As you can see, because these two hashtag essentially mean the same thing. This is in French and this is in English. So sometimes the emotion type overlap between the hashtags. As you can see, the top emotions identified by this hashtag are somewhat the same with the top emotions identified by this hashtag and the top race related emotions identified by this hashtag is also the same as the, the top race related emotions identified by this hashtag. 